So let's talk about Dune. So Dune was published in 1965. It's written by Frank Herbert. <clears throat> it's considered a uh, science fiction classic of sorts. Um, and I want to position myself in relation to the material before we talk about it overall. <clears throat> I the, the 1984 film, the David Lynch film, this one, <laughs> um, came out when I was eight. I didn't see it until more like I was 12. Uh, it the, the director's cut was being aired on some channel. Um, and I fell in love with it. The, the movie I was just blown away by. Which, you know, just shows that maybe my bar was low or maybe special effects really just weren't, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> like it was still considered state-of-the-art special effects. Like I can't, when I think about it now, I can't, really remember what I thought of things like the effects, I was just, the story for me was amazing. So then I picked up the book and I devoured this book, Dune Messiah and Children of Dune. <clears throat> and by the time I got to the end of Children of Dune, it had gotten weird enough that I stopped reading. So, <clears throat> but I still, have these really fond memories of this book and the 84 movie and um, <clears throat> I reread this book two or three years ago and I realized that things have changed a lot in publishing and in like style of writing and I think it's just honestly it's like there in this book there's a lot of what what people would call head hopping because you might have dialogue and somebody else's thoughts all in one paragraph and you're getting everybody's points of view um, <clears throat> kind of all enmeshed together. There aren't these big breaks where you're changing POVs or they are not changed chapter by chapter. It's kind of all a jumble. But at the time, even like when I read this at 12, 13 years old, that did not seem strange. That did not seem weird. Reading it again now, I was like, oh, this isn't how we're told to write anymore. We're, we're told to be very, <clears throat> excuse me, clear and distinct in, in like point of view and to make these breaks and don't head hop and don't, but clearly a lot has changed. <clears throat> also, I would say this moves a lot more slowly than your average more common current piece of fiction. Um, it, it, there's a lot of political intrigue going on. There's a lot of building, world building that takes time. <clears throat> um, and so some people, if they were to pick it up today and are used to more modern styles of writing, they would not like this. They might be frustrated with it. They might say it's slow and boring. Um, or even confusing at points. Um, so I can see that. I mean, my feelings towards it as I was rereading re it was even like, this is a great story, but now the way it's written feels very, I don't want to say wrong, but it, it felt, and it's it not necessarily antiquated even, just it's not what you would normally expect to see in a modernly published book. I mean, it kind of shows its age in that way. But it's still, in my mind, just a really great story, fascinating story. When I was a kid, we had a German Shepherd and I just wanted so desperately to name it Duke Paul Atreides and call it Atreides, call it Trey. And my parents were like, no. So we named it Professor Britton Garrett, called it Brinny. And that's a character from the Vesper Holly books by Lloyd Alexander. If you've never read those, they're really great middle grade series. Go find them. But um, they're kind of a female Indiana Jones thing. And Professor Brenton Garrett is Vesper's, like, um, guardian of sorts. And uh, so Brinny, as she calls him. And that's what we ended up naming the German Shepherd. But I really wanted to name it Atreides because I just thought that was the coolest name. Um, anyway. <clears throat> 
so then, uh, you know, but yeah, I mean, I was, I was, I was a fan. I had my little Dune storybook, um, all that good kind of thing. And, uh, you know, it was just such a great cast, too. Gurney was played by Sir Patrick Stewart. Um, I know everybody's like, well, but Kyle McLaughlin was obviously too old to be Paul. But you know what? I it's, Maybe because I was young, it just that didn't register. It wasn't like, oh, I think he's so old or whatever. Um, I think, you know. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> We went and saw the the new current movie uh, a couple days ago, and it just brought back so much nostalgia for me. I just, I wasn't prepared for that. Like, I went in thinking, well, I know this story, and I know more or less what Denis Villeneuve is going to do, and like, uh, I, it's, you know, but like when Duncan Idaho appeared, and I was like, oh, Duncan Idaho, I love Duncan Idaho, you know, like, um, although, and maybe it's just me, but Jason Momoa, when he does not have facial hair, looked like, to me, he looks so much like Steven Seagal, it really, like, I was, like, really distracted for a hot minute, but, um, anyway, <laughs> maybe that's just me, it's like, I don't know, through me. Um, I thought it was a beautiful production of the story. Obviously, you know, they, they had to, to they're, it's, they're doing it in two parts. Um, but, uh, and, and they left out some characters and some things that were a bigger focus in the book and in the 84 movie. Um, you know, the Harkonnens, servants uh, and kind of explaining what a mintat is and things like that there it's not real clear in this um, in, in in this film they don't I, it's like they didn't bother with that I didn't even quite realize that Dave Batusta was playing beast um because if they n mentioned his name, I kind of missed it. And I was like, is he supposed to be Fade? Because, like, that doesn't seem right. But, like, I was like, oh, okay. Later I looked at the IMDb and I was like, oh, he was Beast. Okay. So I had kind of forgotten. And it seems like, yeah, in some cases, some of this stuff was... Uh, you know, some of the stuff was skimmed or just kind of uh, uh, excised. Um, and that's, I mean, it made sense for this film. Um, it, it's funny because I had to kind of, walking out, think, well, there was some stuff missing, but what was it? Like, because it was still very seamless. It was well put together. The flow was good. Um, and again, like I said, it's a beautiful production. Um, I, I feel like Jessica was not as strong as I wanted her to be. Because she's kind of a badass in the book and in the first movie I, I in this one she she tries to assert herself a couple times with Paul but like for the most part ends up being like anyway <laughs> I don't know if you've read the book if you've seen the 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 80s movie and and this movie if you have thoughts I'd be curious to hear it I do still love this book even though it hasn't aged maybe as well as, um, <laughs> I, again, I think the story is solid. And then I, Children do, and it got, like, it went off the rails even for me. I was like, okay, um, if I'm remembering correctly, and I, it's, it's been 30 years. So, um, so uh, I'll put a little spoiler alert, and you can fast forward uh, past the, the spoiler alert symbol if you don't want to know something about Children of Dune. And, and I'm saying, I don't even, I'm not even sure I'm remembering this right, but if I remember right, it was, it was kind of when people started turning into sandworms. If I remember right, there was a boy and girl twins and they, they turn into sandworms. I think that's what happened. And I think that was the moment in Children of Dune when I was like, yeah, I'm done. I think, you know, like, I think that was the point at which I was like, I'm, I'm over it. But Dune and 
to a lesser extent, Dune Messiah, I do remember enjoying. I've never felt the need to reread it. Um, Dune, I've reread a couple times. Again, the most recently, just two or three years ago, where I was like, oh, yeah, this is... Uh, it's very... I, just a lot has changed in the way writing and consumption, I think, in, in, a, in a world where... We're used to things happening quickly, and so our, we want our stories to also happen quickly. It seems like this is not that. And uh, again, we want like very clear and concise points of view. This is not that. Um, but it's still a really good story. We've got really good characters, really strong. Oh, that was the other thing in the current movie. They made Gurney like very gruff, which he is. But the other thing about Gurney in the book and in the 84 movie, he's also a balladeer, you know? And I think Paul mentioned it something like in passing very early on in the movie where he said, you know, sing us a song instead or whatever. Um, and that doesn't really, doesn't? <laughs> that didn't, I was gonna say didn't and doesn't at the same time it came out doesn't. Um, I didn't really get it explored all that much. Um, and, uh, and then the, just some of the, the lines that I find really powerful from the, like, for the father, nothing. When, when Jessica, when they're on Caladan and Jessica asks the Reverend Mother, you know, but, but what about my husband? That, that line, for the father, nothing, is in my mind so powerful and so rooted and um I don't think she said it in this one or if she did it was a blow off even the mantra against fear felt um buried uh, and you know things like that um I used to have that memorized I don't anymore I'd have to go read it but uh I used to I used to be able to do the whole mantra against fear um so yeah things things like that um Still, again, uh, I think a, a good a good movie. You can hear the cat. He wants to share his opinion as well. Um, uh, you know, and I think it just it, it's a softer movie than the '84 one. It, you know, um, for something that's generally harsh and angular, like Arrakis is. Um, this movie feels kind of softened edges ish to me. Maybe that's just Timothy Chalamet because uh, he uh, he is very, I mean, he always kind of looks half asleep or high or something. I don't know. He's, I mean, he seems very charming, but he always kind of has this half-lidded look on his face like he just woke up or something. Um, uh, or as my son said, he's, he always looks like someone just woke him up and told him to start acting. <laughs> So, um, but he, he, he does, did very well as Paul. And I'm not sure I've ever seen any other Timothy Chalamet movie. Um, I never saw Call Me By Your Name or I don't know what else he's been in, but I think this might be the first time I've ever actually seen one of his films. So there's that. All right. Enough babbling. I just wanted to put this here and if you've again if you've seen it if you've read it if you know let me know your thoughts um let me know if I'm forgetting anything um this Baron Harkonnen to me does not seem as just incredibly nasty as the one from the 84 films and the one from this book um and even Beast it's almost like they want him to be a little bit sympathetic and I'm like um, so I don't know if they're trying to be a little more ambiguous about who's actually in the right. If they're trying to be like, as a political thriller, this is more like neither side is really good or right. Um, they're, they're doing things for different reasons, but you know. Um, but I don't know. I can't really tell uh, what the stance is there. I just didn't feel like the Harkonnens were all that harsh. We didn't even see the Padishah Emperor, I don't think. Um, they also were pronouncing things a little differently than I'd always heard them pronounced or, um, and I mean, you know, maybe I've always heard or th in my head heard the words incorrectly, but like, I don't think that's likely to change for me 
this many years down the road. I'm going to say Padishah Emperor. I'm going to say Harkonnen. Um, yeah. So, again, those are my thoughts. Leave comments. Um, and I will see you. I'm, I'm compiling my reading stats for the year. I'm going to have a great reading, like, wrap-up video uh, probably at the end of December because I'm trying to get those last few books read. And then, um, yeah. Can't believe we're this close to the end of the year already. I don't know if I'm going to finish A Conjuring of Light, which may be the biggest tragedy of the whole year. <laughs> anyway, I'll see you next time.